like a modern king. Come at the jungle wearing lime mink. Set these cats until we tie. As night falls in Brisbane's inner city, Peter Taimani and his outreach team are looking for at risk teens to offer them a ride home before there's any trouble. They're here with adults that we're not sure who they are. They're getting involved in um, using substance use and stuff like that and um, just getting up to mischief sometimes. Peter finds a teenage boy he knows asleep on a bench and wakes him up. Where you been, bro? You been... Hey? You've got to be transported somewhere, bro. You can't be just taking naps out on the bench. It looks like you're sunbathing, bro. Yeah. <laughs> He's recently had a stint in a youth detention centre and the workers are keen to make sure he's got concrete plans. Yeah. Going back to start something in Cherbourg? Construction? Yeah, better than getting in trouble down here. That's right. 17 year old Kulaya has come to the city with friends. Some nights there can be friction with strangers. Uh, it all depends, like rules and like if you say something like, like wrong to them. Do you worry about your friends getting into trouble and, and maybe being taken to a police watch house? Yeah, because you never know what might happen to them. Listening to the adults like growling and stuff and probably just scare them. In 2019, the ABC's Four Corners program exposed shocking conditions inside the Brisbane City Watch House, where young people were being held regularly. The revelations prompted the Queensland Government to remove most children from watch houses. Last year, a young couple and their unborn child were hit and killed by a teenager driving a stolen car. It prompted the Queensland Government to launch a major crackdown on youth crime. One of the changes was a presumption against bail for serious offences. Families have been shattered and lives have been lost. And that is why today we are taking very strong action. Their lives are being used as political footballs. There's growing concern that crackdown is resulting in more kids in custody. That exposure to the system, to the cops and the courts and detention, makes them more likely to re-offend. 630 Queensland children spent at least one night in a police watch house last year. We are seeing more Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander young people being arrested. More of them are ending up in the watch house. More of them are ending up in detention. Now, young people who have been held in police watch houses are taking legal action against the Queensland government, claiming their human rights were breached. Behind the scenes, the Public Guardian has been voicing its concerns, questioning whether watch houses could violate children's legal rights. Three young people have taken a case to the Queensland Civil and Administrative Tribunal. If we see that this case is successful, then we have to ask the question of, is the use of adult watch houses with children appropriate if we're breaching their human rights? In the last few weeks. Um, so what have we got? Like five young people, the three 14-year-olds who've been there in nine days, and that one young 14-year-old who's on the suicide watch, which is really concerning, obviously. Katie Aitchison, outgoing CEO of the Youth Advocacy Centre, is worried about the harm caused by extended custody in watch houses. I had um, a young female recently, she was 16, and she was in the watch house. She had been seen to be unfit for trial because she had such complex mental health issues um, because of trauma in her childhood. And we saw an immediate deterioration for her mental health. Um, and when she got out, she was significantly impacted by six days of trauma, essentially. Complaints are being made by young people alleging poor treatment by police in watch houses, including being choked, yelled at and grabbed by the throat, put into a cell with an adult and put in a headlock on the floor. Police told 7.30 complaints are treated seriously and investigated. In a statement, police said there are a number of reasons for extended custody and young people are segregated from other prisoners. 
yeah, they can't mic out for 659. We're on patrol in an area north of Brisbane with the Morton co-responder team. So it's Thursday night, we'll head down to the local shopping centres in North Lakes. Co-responder team is a 24-hour model, youth justice and police working together. The sort of kids that we focus in on it would be young people that um, intergenerational offending, um, domestic violence, try and get young people re-engaged in education, um, in programs, in sporting activities. Oh, I'm back in your basketball. Hey man, how are you going? You have been keeping me out of trouble, which is so good. For a long time. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. I stay at this guy's house now. Da his dad also good. keeps me out of trouble as well. Oh yeah? Oh, that's awesome. Around the corner, there's another group of boys. Stuart McIntyre visited one boy when he was locked up in a watch house. He just came up to check on me and <laughs> made sure I had all my blankets. Yeah, it can be quite confronting and traumatic for a young person. They talk about their mental health while they're there and how being uh, within the watch house adversely affects them. There are calls for the Queensland Government to urgently rethink the state's youth justice system. Youth Justice Minister Leanne Linnard was unavailable for interview. In a statement, she defended present practice, saying most young people are held in watch houses for a very short period and more children are being denied bail because they are a risk to community safety. Please give a massive round of applause for Say True God. Come on guys, make him feel loved, make him feel welcome. Rapper Say True God knows how hard it is to stay out of trouble. I grew up in a... Uh probably in the same household as you fellas. Domestic violence and uh, drug abuse and all that. It just, uh, if times are tough at the moment, just do your best, keep pushing, keep pushing, don't give up. We have experience at home and stuff that no one else sees and we just go through our pains and stuff. And like, I still stress and like, I still get sad, but it's um, all right, I'm getting a job soon, yeah. Enough is enough. It's time to take these children out of the watch houses. It's time to look at what's happening in youth detention. How do we divert children away from cells and into the community and into a life that is meaningful? 